Welcome back to The Trade. I'm Gina Beck. This is Drew Williams. Thank you for listening, liking, commenting, and subscribing. We appreciate you all, especially the views on Apple Podcasts. It really means a lot. Yeah, and I'll, like always, thank you again for the continued engagement, the continued support, and the hashtag Banana Cats. If you have a story and you want to come on and tell it, go to the links in the description and message us, and we'll be sure to get back to you. Absolutely. How are you, Drew? I'm doing all right, G. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Excited for this podcast. Another week, man, we're just chugging along. We haven't missed an episode. It's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. I'm pretty This is like 77. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Something I want to mention is we're, I know that you guys are listening to us and you guys don't see where we are, but we're in a thing called Werby. We're not sponsored by them or anything like that. We just want to kind of talk about it for a second. And And I'm not, I'm sorry. I was like, and I'm not sure if it's Werby or Whereby. I've heard people say both, so. Just for someone corrects us. Up in the corner, we have a little tree. And the little tree, if we're able to click on it, yeah, we can click on it. It says, the February Forest Project will plant trees for the meetings you host on Werby this month. 500,000 plus trees have been planted so far, which is really cool. So, So you guys know, every three podcasts, we ha- are planting trees, I guess. <laughs> According to that, yeah, that's what it seems like. I don't know. I think it started uh, this month or c- last week. I can't remember exactly when they said it started. But uh, I, th- I believe if you guys are do online hosting just for, like, talking to your loved ones, I think if you guys sign up and the, the main regular account's free, I believe it's the same way. Yeah, we can link it in the description so you guys can check it out if you want. Again, we're not sponsored. We just think it's really cool. We're helping, we're helping the environment with these podcasts in a way. It's actually really neat, and I just wanted to tell you guys. Yeah, absolutely. I'm mean, like, honestly, we would not have the podcast if Werby didn't have its service. So, again, like, we're not sponsored, but it's it's a really cool service. Yeah, for sure. Well, this kind of puts me into a spot, something I wanted to talk about for a little bit that's even G knows it's a very complicated story. It's pretty heavy. And I just wanted to kind of just throw some information out there and maybe continue to talk about this later on. Maybe if we get some response in the comic section about this. But I'm sure a lot of our listeners are aware of a group called Operation Underground Railroad. It's led by a man named Tim Ballard. Well, Operation Underground Railroad claims to have rescued 5,000 plus children from straight up in some cases, but there's absolutely no evidence of them rescuing anyone. And I want to read a description from a recent video from the the guy that brought this all to our attention. Um, They're called American Crime Journal, and we will link everything in the description and this is from his latest video that dropped i believe on the 27th of january and this is what the description read on december 10th 2020 a vice news article exposed tim ballard weaving an elaborate web of lies with exaggerated and fabricated law enforcement partnerships and claiming to rescue victims who who rescued herself the liliana story helped our raise over 21 million dollars in 2119 a record-breaking year for Ballard and OUR. Liliana became the faceless poster child, except for the digital Valentine's Day card, the little girl designed to be sold separately by OUR for $3.99 each. On January 29, 2019, OUR founder and CEO Tim Ballard wrote an op-ed for Fox News, Fox News, excuse me, introducing Liliana, a child of OUR that had recently been rescued from traffickers in New York City. Ballard stated not long ago, a 13-year-old girl from Central America, let's call her Liliana, was kept from her village that trafficked into the U.S. at a location where there is no wall or barrier. From there, she was taken to New York City, where she was raped by American men 30 to 40 times a day. 
the private anti-trafficking organization I founded over five years ago, Operation Underground Railroad, eventually helped Liliana escape her hell, and she is now healing in our care as she prepares to take on her characters in federal court. Over the next two weeks, Ballard to told several different versions of Liliana's story, including another version of her story in a meeting with President Trump. This ultimately resulted in Tim Ballard testifying before Congress in a Senate Judiciary Committee meeting. A few weeks later, Ballard resigned as CEO. By then, Liliana's story reached millions of Americans. There's only one problem. It simply wasn't true. And it goes on, I'm going to quote from that Vice article. Liliana wasn't found or rescued by anyone. When she was just 17, after years of rape, psychological manipulation, physical abuse, she escaped on her own. Liliana bravely escaped her trackers on her own years ago. The little girl was 23 years old by the time Ballard claimed OURR recently rescued her and guided her through recovery. There is no record of OURR's involvement by any agency. Both federal, New York state government agencies, and non-government partnered organizations that would have helped Liliana have never had a partnership or any involvement with OUR. There is so many levels to just this part of the story. And I want to commend Again, American Crime Journal, I believe his name is Damon, Damian Moore. And there's another gentleman named Kenneth Lynn Packer. And he, his videos are a little dry, but it's because he's just filled with so much information. And he goes into these deep ties that, that Tim Ballard's tried, tied directly to the LDS church, the Mormon church. And in... March of 2019, American Crime Journal began investigating an incident involving OUR, who briefly entered the Carly Goose case, which was a girl that went missing uh, near the Nevada-California border. When OUR learned that uh, American Crime Journal was questioning their operations and finances, they hired a law firm, Kern McConkie, the LDS church legal alter ego, who shields them from claims to serve a cease and desist letter to anyone they feel like. And McConkie, <laughs> they have had multiple, multiple documents released. I'm guessing hackers got them. And there's a website, which I'll link to called Mormon Links. And they've released internal documents that detailing half a dozen Mormons abuse cover-ups and one where they were reluctant to send a missionary home because he could be charged with felony sex crimes and another they refused to ex an elder who molested an eight-year-old and they also include foreign sex abuse cover-ups because they go all over the world too so this is very much like we're going to be censored in the crap out of this episode very much like the catholic church uh there's a bunch of internal cover-up they don't want to fess up to it but there's so many layers to this and on top of them taking all this money away, they're literally taking attention away from real groups that actually rescue children. Like one of them being the Child Rescue Coalition, the other one being the Child Rescue Association of North America. And it's really sad that he has been just using this fake story it's almost like stolen valor that's what it feels like to me like i'm not that i'm in the military or anything like that but just he's taking claim to all these things and not doing anything and it almost it just feels very manipulative and sick so i i have followed this organization for quite some time i am i've been very fond of it so hearing this is is crazy to me because then who runs their social media you know, like who runs these funds, who runs, they also do a thing where they invite people to come and take these classes where you can learn things, you know, who runs, like, who are these people that are running all of these things? I then? would, so I'm going to have to, we'll pin them in the comments. I'll have to go back and find them. Every piece of footage where they actually show Tim Ballard, know you are going on an operation, saving someone, mm -hmm. they're tagging along all those girls are found in Utah, which is really weird. Right. Um, That's where the organization is mainly at, right? Is yeah. Utah? And then so Tim Ballard, every time that he's been coming out with like co-op pieces, you know, defending what he is, 
they're coming out of a company called Deseret News. Deseret News is owned by Deseret Management Company in Salt Lake City, Utah. Deseret Management Company is an asset management company and holding company for the for-profit business owned by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the LDS. Deseret Books and the Covenant Communications, Inc. are publishers of official LDS material. Both are subsidiaries of Deseret Management Company. Both companies publish a series which they call him a researcher and, and historian. That's who they call Tim Ballard. These series of basically biblical fiction perpetuate early American history that was an act of God and prophesied by Joseph Smith. It goes, the entire thing is ran by religious fanaticals and they're, they're, they're liars. They're, they've been, they've, it's probably one of the best scams in the last couple of years. I mean, considering they raised 21 million in 2019. Definitely. And I still see things about them all the time, randomly on my, on my feeds on social media. So they're still thriving and going strong. Right. It's just like, I, I, it's boggles my mind. I've wanted to be involved. That's how, how realistic they make it seem. You know what I mean? I've wanted to even be involved. So it's just like, what the heck? I, I you know, all? until I really started digging deep into it, because it's so much to take in. We're, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm saying that we're only scratching the surface, I am not joking. If we're going to link you to American Crime Journal, which everyone should go subscribe to. He does awesome work. And then uh, Lynn Packer's videos. They're long. You'll probably need to watch them in parts. But the... I guess you would call it circumstantial evidence and the other evidence and, and real evidence that they've collected against them paints them as just a complete fraud. They're just the entire thing's a scam. Dang. That's very unfortunate because like you said, they're taking away from other groups that are serious and that are really truly helping and having something like that go on for a money benefit is just like, it's sick. It's well, and sick. this the other thing too is this. Uh, <laughs> this doesn't make you probably didn't realize this. I had to I had to look it up to see just to verify for myself. But back in uh, August twenty seventh, the last year, which was in Mister Packer's video from October, apparently Davis County, which is uh, just north of Salt Lake City, uh, their attorney received a complaint. A, requ a request for a criminal investigation on how OUR solicits donations. Now Davis County Attorney Troy Rawlings has signaled on a criminal investigation, and there people believe it's already begun. They're they're already they're already laying their case. Well, we definitely have to keep up with this and find out what happens for sure. Yeah, I'm. I like I said, I think I'm gonna just continue to bring up maybe not as much in depth as this episode, but I'm gonna keep bringing up stuff what they bring out. Because it seems like the uh, American Crime Journal and uh, Lynn Packer have a lot of information, and I, I, I don't like people using such a horrible thing that happens, like we discuss constantly on this podcast, as a way to make money and get clout. Basically, it's sick. And not even doing anything to really help, just reaping all the benefits and not even doing anything. Well, they're just pushing their agendas too. Like there's, they they blame the property industry for everything, and then. Well, it goes to show that anybody can run a social media platform and say whatever they want and be whoever they want, and we all, me including, believe it, and you know, we'll donate to it and want to be a part of it even though it's just not even legitimate you know good propaganda works and works well <laughs> sad to say but and it's one of those things where probably a couple years ago i don't know how long this investigation and people have been catching on right but there had to have been a time where nobody thought anything negative of it right so if someone would go google this and they just see nothing but positive things and then you don't know any better. I yeah. just see how a lot of people fall for that, right? Well, even if you go look now, there's a it's a pretty good website besides this one instance called Charity yeah, a, Charity Net. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. 
I was just going to say they have a good Google search. Is what I was going to say. Well, even if you go to websites, like I was just about to mention, this uh, charitynavigator.org, they've got a really good rating. They'll tell you to donate to them. But then the other ones that I mentioned in the beginning also have the same rating. But mm. if you watch some of uh, American Crime Journal's videos, they talk about how those other groups are not getting the same funding that they used to because OUR is taking money away from them, basically. I mean, I've watched viral TikTok videos talking about them, and that's the most prominent source for even young people right now mm -hmm. and middle-aged people. So they've definitely learned how to market themselves and target audiences and get what they want. Like we said, it's very unfortunate when it comes to the other real groups. But the best we can do is spread this awareness and maybe we could bring someone on to talk about it that is really investigating this and maybe we can just keep you all updated on whatever we find out. That's the best we can really do. And maybe if you guys feel like you want to, you guys could go leave reviews on their stuff saying, hey, this is a scam. This is not true. I mean, do your own research before you do something like that. But that's something that could help is the more real, honest reviews, the better. Well said. I think I want to leave it on that note. Thank you for listening, liking, commenting, and subscribing. We love you all. Until next time, Banana Cats. Banana Cats. Much love. Peace.